So this is the Rocket Apartamento. It's a $1,750 heat exchanger espresso machine that I've owned for nearly a year and a half. And this is the Lalit Bianca V2. It's a $3,000 dual boiler, PID enabled, and flow controllable espresso machine that I've owned for a little over a month. Hey, it's Chris here and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm comparing these two espresso machines and I'm going to be talking about some of their pros, cons, and finding out which machine might be the right one for you. Now before we continue into this video, I do have a full dedicated review of the Rocket Apartamento, as well as a comparison between the Rocket Apartamento to the $500 Gaggia Classic Pro, both of which you can find via links in the description down below. Now a quick disclaimer, the Lili Bianca was sent to me for free by the fine people at Cliff and Pebble, but all thoughts and opinions remain my own and I was not financially compensated for this video. However, I do have affiliate links that I use in the description down below that do give me a small commission when you use them at no added charge to you as the customer. And if you are in the market for a brand new espresso machine, be sure to use my links in the description down below as it helps support me and the channel and it helps me continue making videos like this one. Okay, so with all that being said, let's first start with some of the build differences between these two machines. Okay, so both of these are E61 machines. What that means is yes, the port filters are compatible with each other and other E61 machines as well. Now I mention this because you might be surprised about how many times people ask me if port filters between the Rocket Apartamento and the Gadget Classic Pro are the same. They are not. The Gadget Classic Pros is proprietary while the Rocket uses a standard E61 group head, much like other machines, including the Lilit Bianca. Both of these machines are built like an absolute tank. The Rocket weighs in at 20 kilos or 44 pounds, and the Bianca weighs in at 27 kilos or 59 pounds. Also, as a side note, my version of the Rocket Apartamento here is called the Siri Nera, and the only real difference is a cosmetic difference where they have these smooth matte black side panels. Both of these machines are full of stainless steel. Any of these surfaces will be fingerprint magnets, but that's just sort of the nature of stainless steel. Here's a quick tip, buy a stack of microfiber cloths and keep them on your coffee bar. You'll be glad you did because they help with cleaning and they help keep your machine fingerprint free. In terms of footprint, both machines are roughly 30 centimeters wide and 45-ish centimeters deep. Although that number is including the Bianca's water tank, which is currently mounted to the back of the machine, this machine is a little bit unique in the sense that it can also be mounted to the left or the right of the machine. As to how this translates on a coffee bar, I think if you have a machine like the Rocket Apartamento and you're upgrading to something like the Lily Bianca, you don't necessarily need to upgrade your coffee bar itself, I think it'll fit just fine. Although I do want to point out that if you are keeping your machines underneath a cabinet or a cupboard, the Lilith Bianca is a little bit taller. The cup warming area on the Bianca has a much nicer design with an integrated removable tray and no exposure to the machine's internals. Meanwhile, the rocket is essentially just the top of the machine with some holes that expose the internals with a cup rail along the top. Both machines also have 2.5 liter water tanks. One cool thing about the Bianca is that you can plumb it in. What that means is you can connect it to a water line and never have to use the tank. You can even plumb in the drip tray to set up a drainage as well. The Rocket has an 800 milliliter drip tray capacity, while the Lilith's is certainly a little bit larger. In practice, based on my own experience, this translates to roughly emptying out the Rocket two to three times a week on average, and the Lilith Bianca one to twice a week. Of course, dependent on your usage. For the drip tray, I do still like that the Rocket has this magnetic sort of latch that is very satisfying to use while the Bianca just relies on some rubber bumpers. The grills on the Bianca allowed me to place my scale a little bit easier, almost like stepped increments, while on the Rocket, you just have to be careful of the holes. And for reference, I am using the Akaya Lunar. The Bianca also seems to have this sort of hidden storage area, which is where I keep a blind basket for cleaning. Both machines have excellent knobs. Obviously here, I do have a custom wooden kit for Musa tampers on the Rocket Apartamento, but both machines have nice and smooth knobs that turn easily without any issues, and I haven't had to lube either of the machine's knobs. Now, one thing that the Bianca did fix compared to an issue I had with the Rocket Apartamento is the maneuverability of the steam wand and placement of the hot water valve. The Steam One has this blocker that prevents it from rubbing up against the machine where you can see my rocket has suffered a little bit of wear over time. And the hot water valve. While it's still not perfectly ideal, it's a little bit nicer that I can leave it looking a little bit more straight and natural while giving me full access to the lever while on the rocket you have to awkwardly keep the valve at an angle. And lastly, the power buttons. The Lilit uses a push button to power it on and off, while the Rocket uses a little switch. You can leave them both in the on position and use a smart plug to actually control whether or not your machine is on, which is what I have done. And I do this so that my machines can auto start in the morning when I'm still in bed, so that by the time I'm out of bed and ready to start my day and make a cup of coffee, machines are warmed up and ready to go. Something I don't really like about the Bianca are these little engraved icons here. Just why? Now let's talk about the noise. I'll touch on the differences between the two different pumps in the machine a little bit later into this video, but when you do turn the machines on, they both sound fairly similar in terms of that starting up boiler sound. 
One little difference here I did notice is that Steam is released through the OPV on the Lily Bianca, which means Steam is released on the exterior of the machine, whereas in the Rocket, I do believe it is released inside internally within the machine. Now, when the machines are on and idle, the Bianca is completely silent. It does not make a sound whatsoever. Meanwhile, when the rocket is idling, you can sort of hear some hissing sounds, presumably because it's a heat exchanger machine versus dual boiler, but that's just something I thought I would note about the Lily Bianca versus the rocket when they're both on and idle throughout the day. Overall, I will say that the build quality of the Lily Bianca edges out the rocket for me, although it definitely should given that it is the more premiumly priced machine. All of the metal parts, even down to the drip tray grills, just feel a little bit stiffer and sturdier compared to that of the Rocket. So now let's talk about some of my experiences having used both of these machines. I will admit that out of the box, the Bianca was a little bit more intimidating, especially with all of its different features from PID to flow control. For the first few weeks or so, I basically just kept the lever at a point where I was hitting a consistent 9 bar for my shots. And if you do want to know what my experience is like with the Rocket, be sure to check out my Workflow Wednesday series, which is a point of view style series of videos I record while answering some Q&A from my audience. I've got well over dozens of videos showing my workflows across different machines from the Gadget Classic Pro to the Flare 58 to, of course, the Rocket Apartamento, and the next one will, of course, be featuring the Lilith Bianca. Now, functionally, in terms of preparation and workflow, it's 100% identical. You dose your beans, you grind your beans, you prep your puck, WDT, distribute, all that good stuff, then you give it a tamp, put on your puck screen, then you lock it into the group and pull the lever. Exactly the same process on both machines. Now, the Bianca does have a few features that do make it a little bit different should you want to dial in your shots further, and that, of course, is flow control, the PID, and pre-infusion. So flow control allows you to adjust the pressure of water going into your shot. To do this on machines like the Rocket Apartamento and the Gadget Classic Pro, you do have to open up the machine and go and either adjust or swap a part out entirely in order to bring that pressure down to an industry standard of 9 bars. Now, depending on where you're buying your Rocket Apartamento from, it might have already been done for you, but most Gadget Classic Pros that I'm aware of come stock at 13-ish bars. You can actually also buy an added flow control unit to the Rocket Apartamento. I'll leave a link to a video from Lifestyle Labs where I believe he did that to his machine. Now, the Bianca being a dual boiler machine with PID also allows you to adjust the temperature of your water for both brewing and steaming. Meanwhile, on the Rocket, you may have to rely on using a temperature gauge and cooling flushes to get within your targeted range. The Bianca does have another feature, and that, of course, is pre-infusion. Now, what pre-infusion is, is that it lets a little bit of water into your group head, saturating the puck, then it quickly shuts off the water, lets it get saturated fully, and then continues with the shot, potentially having a more even extraction. The Bianca lets you set an automatic pre-infusion for any set amount of time in seconds. Now, I'll get a little bit more into whether or not you should even care about these features at all a little bit later into this video. But essentially, this is what's separating the Rocket, a $1,750 machine, from the Lilith Bianca, which is a $3,000 espresso machine. Flow control, PID, and pre-infusion, and of course the dual boilers and a different pump. Speaking of the pump, the Lilith Bianca uses what's called a rotary pump, and the Rocket Apartamento uses what's called a vibratory pump. Now, I do not claim to be an expert on these machines or what these different types of pumps are, so I'm just going to read to you directly what I found on Google. So a quick Google search shows that vibratory pumps are smaller, inexpensive, and tend to be easier to replace. Meanwhile, rotary pumps are quieter, offer more consistent pressure, and generally have longer lifespans. Again, I personally don't know if there's any other functional differences beyond this, it's just what a quick Google search told me. In practice, I did find the Bianca to be significantly quieter compared to the Rocket Apartamento, but it's also just sort of a different type of sound altogether. Here's a quick demo of each. <laughs> Now very quickly, let's talk about the steam power. I can adjust the steam to be more or less powerful. Personally, I keep it at the maximum temperature to get the most power out of the steam one, but I do see the appeal of starting off less aggressive if you're a bit newer into steaming your milk. Steaming on the Bianca only took a moment to adjust to, but I've realized that with this machine, I've been able to get some incredibly silky textured milk much more consistently than I ever could on the Rocket, that in addition to binging some Lance Hedrick videos. Now let's talk about the espresso quality. So the Bianca is over 70% more expensive than the Rocket Apartamento. Does that mean it makes 70% better espresso? And the answer to that is a big fat no. In fact, you can have $500 machines like the Gadget Classic Pro or even the Flare 58 pulling great tasty shots. But what you are paying for of a machine like the Bianca is consistency, reliability, and levels of control, and generally just having a nicer time with a machine like this. Now, no one's going to be able to justify a fancy espresso machine as an essential. If you're in the market for an espresso machine, you presumably have the spare disposable income to invest in one and to sort of invest in the whole setup, including things like a knockbox, um, a tamper, 
puck preparation tools, things like that. Now for me and where I am currently at my journey into Espresso, I definitely appreciate having some of these features from flow control to PID to uh, pre-infusion. I absolutely love the newly added levels of control. I can dial in shots with pressure and temperature, which is something I never really had the ability to do before. Now, because of these added levels of control, I have a level of consistency day to day with my shots that I simply do not have with machines like the Rocket or the Gaggia. Another cool thing I can do is go back to all those James Hoffman tutorials about understanding espresso and really learn about how each of these different features changes the final product in the cup and learn how I can adjust that at home with a machine that has those capabilities. Okay, so conclusion time. Is the Bianca worth it over the Rocket Apartamento? And I will say, yes it is, but only if you are looking to have these levels of control. For most people, you might not actually be looking for these levels of control. You might want something a little bit more straightforward, a machine that looks good and will be reliable for the most part. And if you're in that category, then I would highly suggest a machine like the Rocket. However, if you know that this is going to be a hobby that you're going to get deep into and you want to have all the different features and ability to adjust your espresso, then I highly suggest a machine like the Lalit Bianca. Honestly, functionally, it seems like there's no better machine at this price point. And the ones that are more expensive, like the Linnea Mini, for example, don't seem to even have all the features that this machine does. Not to say that it's a bad machine, of course. You might just be in the market for different things if you're going for a machine like that versus the Bianca. When I first started my journey to Espresso, the PID and flow control features were not things that I particularly cared about, nor was I interested in purchasing an expensive machine to find out. But over time, nearly two years later, I now see the appeal of them and I enjoy using them and having the ability to adjust these things whenever I want to on the day to day. Now, like I mentioned earlier, it's going to be hard to justify a machine that's anything more than the Lilith Bianca. I really can't imagine what features more I would want. At that point, it would really just feel like a cosmetic change and a huge flex. So anyways, that is going to be my conclusion for this video. You can also consider this my sort of full review of the Lilith Bianca. Um, I'll definitely be talking about it more, and if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below, and I'll try to get to you, or I might answer them in an upcoming Workflow Wednesday episode. Once again, you can consider following me at It's Chris on Instagram, where I post pretty often, um, and it's also where I collect questions for Q&A episodes. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like this video if you did, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.